Bobby and Perk. And I, I want to go back to April 18, 2009, game one of the first round of the NBA playoffs. And Derrick Rose made his playoff debut when the Bulls faced the Celtics and Perk. Um, yeah, you were there. What do you remember about that 36-point <laughs> performance by Rose in that game and how just athletic he was? I mean, I remembered everything, Cassidy. I was involved in all the pick and rolls and getting cooked. That's what I remember. I was getting cooked, right? We went into that series not knowing. We knew that he was good, but I was involved, and I was in the drop coverage, and Lord have mercy. I got blamed by Tom Thibodeau in the film room. I mean, we just couldn't stop him. He went on the tail. He woke us up. That series ended up going seven games, one of the – like bet greatest series ever in NBA history. I mean, a lot of legendary moments, but that game one was his coming out party for D-Rose. Bobby, I mean, how do you view his imprint on the league? I'm going to turn it around a little bit and take it off the court here. And this is kind of a message to a lot of these younger players here that they have Derrick Rose to thank, whether it be Tyrese Halliburton last year or Anthony Edwards. There's a reason why each of them saw an extra $40 million in their contract because of the Rose Rule. The Rose Rule was a reflective of Derrick Rose mm. being named MVP and playing on a rookie scale extension where you can bump your contract up an extra 30% here. There's been 10 players that have hit the Rose Rule. And the reason why the NBA put that in is to reward players that have outplayed their contracts here. So I think a lot of these young players who don't know that, now they do. That's a reason why you can make that extra $40 million like Hal Burton Edwards did last year. Yeah, I mean, Rose deserves his respect for many reasons. I mean, Rose was just like the supernova of talent and athleticism right out of the gate, right? But I think the bigger picture than the what ifs are, you know, what we did see from him post injury, which was a journey of resilience and humility and, and, and really emotional connection with fans. We've seen. Many athletes fade away after devastating injuries, but but Derek, he, he really actually fought through a lot, physically and mentally. I mean, his time with the Cleveland Cavaliers was really hard for him, and when he took, you know, some some moments of absence, and I think fans and teammates admired his perseverance despite several setbacks. You saw how people responded to him, you know, standing O's in the garden, moments like that 50-point game with the Timberwolves. They all became these symbols of his never-ending fight and determination, making fans like rally behind him even more. He was almost like an underdog of sorts, like no longer that explosive MVP, mm -hmm. but a player who reinvented himself, um, never having really lost the love for the game. So his story is much about his heart and uh, comeback spirit as it is his athletic peak, I think. And whether or not, guys, he, he is a Hall of Famer, because I know, you know, that's buzzing around social media. I think, you know, he is beloved and celebrated like one. The so last season didn't go as planned for the Nuggets. They got sent packing in the second round after they blew a 20-point lead at home in Game 7 to the Timberwolves. But the reigning MVP and the rest of the 2023 champs seemed motivated by the loss when they returned to Denver for media day this morning. Maybe not motivation, but just, like, don't regret it. Be, uh, respect the good, the, the good team that you are on and uh, because it can flip so easy and so quick, so just to respect and uh, enjoy uh, in the team and the collective that we have and what we build so and just to try to grow if it's possible as the players as the young guys get older they'll see that suffer to win in this league and um you know it's tough to even for gms to create a team like this you know that this well talented and that uh gets along this well you know i think off the court as well so i just said you know just take advantage of the moment we got a chance to do some great things um let's make the most of it from er the outside, everybody views our season as a failure because we didn't win it. And that's, in one hand, it's a compliment because we've set the standard so high and we were the defending champions. A failure can be a motivation, you know, but it can't be fatal. We have a championship window. Not every team has a championship window. And, and what do you do? Do you take advantage of that or do you look back in 20 years and have regrets? All right, Perk, do you think that the Nuggets are in mm. position to capitalize on their championship window? <laughs> Look, the magical number today is 41. I ain't talking about Glenn Rice, and I'm not talking about Dirk and Whiskey. I'm talking about that's the number that Jokic got drafted at, the pick, the 41st pick. Why do I bring that up? Because of the player development. We're talking about the best player in the NBA that was drafted in the second round and now is the best player. 
So if you're telling me do they have enough, yes, because I know they lost Caldwell Pope. But Christian Braun, another guy that they drafted, he's going to go through the Denver Nuggets player development. When it comes down to cultures and structure, the Nuggets are at the top of the list when it comes down to the foundation and culture in the organization. They have their pieces in Jokic, Murray, uh, uh, the kid Porter Jr. Uh, also, uh, um, my guy, uh, well, I can't Aaron think of his name right now, I'm sorry, but uh, Aaron Gordon, there you go. I'm I sorry you, I had fam. a brain loss. But they have their foundation there, right? And you trust their player development. They're going to be a top four team in the Western Conference. And again, anytime you have Nikola Jokic, you're going to have a chance of winning an NBA championship. Well, I agree with Perk. They're still a top four team, but there's more questions this year than there were last year as far as when they won a championship. Who's the fifth starter? Is it Christian Brown or, or Julian um, Strouther? Uh, what can you get off your bench? Last year, you you shot, uh, you ranked 25th in three-point percentage. Now, you lost Colwell Pope. Brown maybe starts now. You replace with him with Russell Westbrook. You signed Dario Saric here. There's a lot of young players, has, as you can see, with that age group. Deron Holmes is out for the year with an Achilles injury here. Can Michael Malone trust this young bench? And, and I think as great as Jokic is, it's the bench that's going to get this, this team through some of these uh, adverse times. But also you have to rely on Jamal Murray and Cheney. I mean, how, how, how big are the questions in your mind around Murray? Well, when you get paid, there is pressure. Four years, $208 million. There's going to be a lot of eyeballs on Jamal Murray, especially after the Olympics where people saw him not be his best self. There's going to be some question marks going in to say, like, is this the same Jamal Murray that we saw in the championship run? Perk, you started with the number 41. I'm going to give you two. When they won a championship, Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray had the best two-man game in the NBA. Now, without some of those key pieces, they're going to need to get back to that level and then some. When it comes to Jamal, I think he's still got the goods. He's one of the best closers. We remember that Lakers series, but it's the consistency of that that is going to be required considering that their supporting cast looks a little bit different. So, yeah, there are going to be some question marks, some pressure, but this is a guy that has proven that he's one of the best scorers in the NBA. We'll see if they can put it together to see if they can contend and get back to number two, as Coach Malone said. And we're talking a lot about the loss of KCP and Reggie Jackson, but the main reinforcement that the Nuggets got their three-time MVP is a, is a former MVP in Russell Westbrook. And here's Jokic on his newest teammate. When I'm on the floor, I don't, I don't want to be walking around, shaking hands, kissing babies. I don't really want to do that. I'm there to... Excuse my language, but kick some ass. I mean, of course, we didn't have a good relationship on the court. Uh, we were fighting a lot and talking back and forth. But um, I know he, I know who he is a little bit outside of the court. So great teammate, uh, vocal uh, leadership, uh, the guy who want to listen, the guy who want to follow in the gym. So I think he's a great, great uh, player for us. And I think he's going to bring us um, all the good stuff. It's funny, I think when, when people talk about Russell Westbrook, no one really mentions defense. They mention how quick he is, how explosive he is, the rebounding, the playmaking. When we went back and watched as a staff his defense last year with the Clippers, end of games, he was on the opposing team's best player every night. Every night. So you have a guy that you can close games with in Russell Westbrook. I, I understand where Michael Malone is going here, certainly when you have a veteran here. And I, don't, I think you cannot lose Westbrook right off from, from the start here. I look at that statement more of it that he doesn't trust the young players that we just mentioned here. And I understand the defense. But when you go back to that, that Clipper Dallas series, that thing got away awfully quick. And I know there was injuries, with, certainly with Kawhi Leonard here. But I think you have to be careful if it's defense, one thing. But you have to make sure offensively everything goes through Jokic and Murray. Well, we know every possession that runs through Jokic is a good one, Chanae. But do you think Russ can still be effective without the ball in his hands? Yeah, I think the best lineups we've seen the last few years with Russ is when he essentially plays some kind of hybrid point guard, but also five, meaning they're smaller. He can attack downhill, but you're surrounded by shooters. The Denver Nuggets, they have a great offense. Jokic, he's a five that can stretch the floor. And so if, uh, if Russ is on the floor, I don't think that's a huge liability. The question marks then are, okay, how does the spacing work with him and Aaron Gordon, who has improved his three-point shot? The spacing is the biggest question with Russ closing. But I do like that he's giving him confidence to say, we need we need him here. Um, and I loved also that Jokic said, oh, yeah, all the good stuff. Like, the <laughs> yes, good stuff the good of stuff. Russ is what we appreciate it. Perk.
You, I mean, look, this is a perfect marriage, right? A perfect situation for Russell Westbrook and a perfect player for the Denver Nuggets. And when you talk about being effective, anyone could be effective when they're playing with Nikola Jokic, right? We see what he has done for Aaron Gordon game. Russ is one of the best, still one of the better slashers in the game today, right? He basically in Oklahoma, they created the corner slash uh, when guys were told to hold the corners for corner three point shots. I see Russ giving this team new life, right? Russ is still chasing that first championship. This is the first time in a long time that Russell Westbrook is actually in position to do that. He's going to take full advantage of it. I'm excited to see him embrace this, his new opportunity. And also, he's going to be the driving force. Let me tell you something about Russ real quick. When I played with Russ in Oklahoma City, Russ is that type of player. When you get off the bus on the road, you have a different type of swagger about yourself. His approach to the game, his approach walking into the arena, that's what you love. And you talk about a guy that could be the engine and put a key in a certain guy's back. That's Russell Westbrook. Just five days until training camps open across the NBA. So let's catch up on the latest news with a little coast to coast starting in L.A. Yesterday, J.J. Redick said that the Lakers are still discussing how to handle Ronnie's first time on the court with his dad. Bobby, think we see Bronny on the court opening night against the Wolves? I think we should start him opening night. Don't fall start off him. your seat, Cassidy. Do not fall off your seat. I think when you look at it, let's just get it right off the – We'll get it away right off the bat as far as starting him we won't have to ask that lingering question throughout the season here when will we see lebron with Bronny? do it opening night right right from the start okay starting him though okay <laughs> um thunder gm sam presti also spoke to the press yesterday saying quote we don't think we're entitled to start on third base chanae uh how close do you think they are Super close. I mean, the list of what they still need is extremely short. They've got an MVP candidate in Shea Gilgis Alexander. They have three stars that are under 26 that average a high amount of points. They got Hartenstein in the center position. They got Caruso, who's coveted by almost every team. If they come out of the West, I am not surprised at all. They did finish there last year. I mean, they are loaded, and their two acquisitions, tough. Off to New Orleans, Zion Williamson told The Athletic, quote, I'm out for straight vengeance in his sixth season. Perk, who exactly is he looking to avenge? Uh, the rest of the league. And you know what? I'm, I love this Zion Williamson, right? A Zion with confidence, letting the world know that I'm about to come out full force. In my opinion, he was the most dominant player outside of Giannis last season before his injury. And I think he's going to come back again at full throttle. He looks in great shape. They're going to try him at the five position. I think he's going to probably lead the league in dunks this year, to be honest comes down to health and speaking of the Clippers are holding Kawhi Leonard out of drills in next week's training camp and team president Lawrence Frank was non-committal about Kawhi being ready for the regular season disappointing news after he just signed a three-year extension in January for 153 million dollars all right big park has Kawhi's window to win with the Clippers officially closed <laughs> yes, yes, especially with the departure of uh, PG and Russ. Here's the thing. We got Bobby here today, my boy Bobby. Bobby, I got a question. I know you don't have the trade machine here, but I need to know this. I said this about a month ago. The Clippers need to really consider moving on from Kawhi and trading them. What are your thoughts? I need to know. I think the answer is yes, Perk, but I think there's a but here. I think but if he's healthy, because that's really the only way they're going to extract as much value if Kawhi Leonard is healthy. And I think for right now, both the Clippers and Kawhi are married to each other until he can get on the court and, and show what he did last year before he got hurt in that, that Dallas series here. And listen, this, this Clippers team, as is, is probably going to fight for the play-in. And I think if you're looking for a restart, you start it with looking at what you can get for Kawhi Leonard. But as I said, you're only going to do that if he's healthy. Shanae, trade Kawhi. Is that crazy talk, especially when they're opening up a new arena? It's not really crazy talk if you talk to Clippers fans that are just itching to compete. The worst place to be in the NBA or even sports is in the middle where you're not the worst, but you're not the best. So if you really want to move in a direction, maybe you look at that. But I don't know if like everyone's all the way there yet, as you mentioned, Cass, because it's a new arena. If he is healthy, which is a big if, probably one of the biggest ifs in the NBA, you, he still has tremendous star power. And even though they lost Paul George, they have been sort of a strength in numbers team too. 
So we'll see what this team looks like if he's healthy. But again, that's the biggest if we've ever seen in the last few years. Yeah, I mean, where do you have them right now in the West? Right now, they're in the middle of the pack or even lower mid of the pack because we still don't know what we're going to get when we see the squad out there, especially if Kawhi. I mean, look, we expected him to be repping Team USA. That didn't happen. So now maybe the health will be better, but you still can't guarantee that. And we still haven't seen, you know, Kawhi at full clip because, you know, he's missed at least 15 games. Pun intended. In, yeah. In each season for the Clippers, including <laughs> missing all of the 2022 season with that ACL injury.